Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to show you how you can create a table component in React.js, and we are going to also be showing you how you can paginate that component. So in order to do that, let's uh, come over and show you what we're going to be using. So we're going to be over at tanstack.com. You can see um, kind of all these different libraries that uh, fall under the kind of tan stack umbrella right here. So we've done a, a few videos on some of these in the past, uh, but we are gonna be focusing on the uh, tan stack table right here. But definitely check out some of these other ones uh, if you are building React applications, there's a lot of good options here. So let's go into this uh, tan stack table right here and we can click on the getting started right here. And then from there, since we're using React, they got these adapters on uh, the right hand side right here. So let's create, uh, let's click on this React table right here. Basically, we're gonna be installing this uh, React uh, table component right here, tanstack uh, slash React table. All right, so let's go ahead and add this. So I just have a basic Next.js application. Uh, I haven't really done anything in here at all. Uh, I've got rid of the um, markup in this home component right here. And then in our global CSS, uh, we're using Tailwind, but I've gotten rid of any other styles there. That's literally all I've done. Uh, so that is the stage I am at. So we're gonna have a terminal open right here and we are just gonna go and install this. So I'm gonna say, PM, PM add. Now you can go npm install or yarn or whatever you're doing. And I'm just gonna paste in that tan stack react table like that. All right, so that is the only package we are gonna need for any of this. So we can just go uh, PM, PM uh, run dev to see if everything is good. And you see we have a uh, blank next app, which is exactly what we want. So let's come back over. Uh, we can click out of this. So in our uh, source app folder right here, we are just gonna add a new folder right here and we're just gonna call it components. And inside of this components folder, we'll add a new file and this will be our uh, table.tsx. And this is where we are gonna handle our table component. So this is all good, but for a table to work, we're gonna need some data to uh, add to that table. So let's come in to our page right here and we'll do a little fetch of the data in here. And then uh, from there, we will pass that down to our actual table component. So I'm actually gonna get rid of any styling on this main right here so we can get rid of that. So because we're using Next.js, uh, the newest uh, Next.js 13, we have access to these uh, React server components. So we can uh, fetch the data right within this component. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna say uh, const and we'll say response here and that will be equal to await. And we're just gonna use the uh, fetch API like this. And inside this fetch, I'm just gonna paste in a uh, JSON placeholder API that we've used in the past uh, in other videos. And basically it's just gonna give you a bunch of comments right there. Now, as you can see, uh, await is giving us a squiggly. This is because we have not uh, marked this as async. So let's do that. So now we have an async function right here. And all we're gonna do is come down below here and we'll say uh, const data. And that'll be await and we'll say uh, res.json. All right, so now this is all we need to do to fetch this data, which uh, Next.js makes it super simple. So that's good, and we can just see if we're getting that. So let's say uh, console.log here, and we'll just console.log that data. So we console.log that data, you can see uh, down here in our terminal, we're getting back all of these results right now. And if we just uh, look at this, you can see we got a post ID, an ID, a name, an email, and a body. So those are kind of the columns that we're gonna be using for our uh, table just to show you how this works. All right, so we can get rid of this console.log right now. And uh, let's come in and create this uh, table component. So I'm gonna close this down. Uh, so give us a little more room right here. Uh, and one thing to note here is we will be having to use uh, use client right here. Um, because that is what's gonna be needed for a uh, tan stack table. 
All right, so these are some of the imports we're gonna need uh, from Tanstack React Table right here. Uh, table components, uh, use React Table, uh, and some other things that we will go through. Uh, this will be for the actual pagination of the table. So that is good. Uh, let's go ahead and just get a component maybe on uh, the screen first. So we can uh, pass the data down and make sure all of that is working. So let's say uh, export uh, default and we'll say uh, function and we'll just say table like that. And in here, we are going to be passing down some uh, data in a second, but we will do that in a minute. Let's just get this uh, up and running. And then from here, we're just going to return uh, some JSX right here. So we'll just say uh, div right here and we'll just type in table right now just to make sure everything is good. Okay, so that is our table component for now. Let's come back in here and let's import this into our uh, main right here. So we'll come in, we'll say uh, table. You should auto import that. You can see up top it gets auto imported. Uh, and then we'll just pass down that data like this and we'll just say data like that. And then we can come in and we can close this off right there. Now we're getting a little error because we aren't using that yet in our table component. So let's pass that down again. So inside of our uh, table props right here, we'll just pass this down uh, in some uh, curly braces right there like this. And we will say a data and we can go ahead and save that. We're getting a little TypeScript error, but don't worry about that right now. We'll type that in a minute, but this uh, error goes away right there. All right, now let's make sure this data is coming through okay. So we'll just uh, console.log and we'll just pass in this data like this and we'll say data like that. All right, so now we can check out the app here and we see we get a uh, table up here, kind of small. If we uh, inspect this, go over to console. You can see we have the uh, data coming through and uh, yeah, there's 500 entries right there. So we got a lot of that data coming through, which is good. Let's go back. All right, so let's add a little typing for this uh, data before we get too deep into things. So we'll come in here and we'll just add a type. So we'll say type and we'll create, we'll create one right here. So we'll say person like this. So that is gonna be equal to basically the columns that we need. So we're gonna have a body column. That's gonna be a string. We're gonna have an email and uh, email. That'll be a string also. We are going to have a name. That'll be a string. And then finally, we'll have a post ID like this, and that'll be a number like this. So we can go ahead and save that, and then that allows us to come in and type this out here. So we have our data being passed down like this, and if we wanna come in and type that, we just go colon like this, open up some uh, braces right there, and we'll say data, and we will say person type that we just created above and it's gonna be an array of the person type basically because we have those 500 different items within the array. Okay, so that is looking good. Let's uh, go ahead and create the actual columns. So in order to do that, uh, Tanstack table here gives us uh, something called create column helper. So we can say const column uh, helper like that and that's gonna be equal to uh, create column helper right there and then from there we're just gonna add a type here of person and then this column helper is gonna be used when we create our columns so let's come down and do that so let's add in the various columns that we're gonna use right here all right so these are going to be the columns for our table now you can see we use this uh, column helper right here, which we uh, created with this create column helper. So we're gonna say column helper dot accessor. So that's gonna be uh, the column that we actually want. So this one's gonna be called email and that's gonna be coming from the data. Um, this name is gonna correspond to the data. If we go in and actually look at that real quick, I'll give you a better idea. So if we come in, check out the data right here, uh, you can see we have all these things. So each one of these attributes here is gonna be hit with the uh, column helper right there. So we've got email, name, body, and post ID. That's what we're gonna be adding to this table. All right, so uh, this column helper, we're gonna do that. And then there are a few other options. There's actually quite a few that you can go and uh, check out the various uh, docs on this. We're gonna keep it pretty simple. So basically we're gonna have a header and then it'll automatically add uh, the cell data. 
Now, if you want to um, change that in some way, you can add this cell column and it'll overwrite that. So just in order to show you how that's done, uh, we're gonna add the cell here. Uh, and then I'm gonna add, this is italics. Um, so we can actually get the value of this cell and just change it to italics, but you could style it however you want. The great thing about this library is it's unstyled, so you can style it in uh, any possible way that you like. It's kind of the nice thing about these uh, UI, these headless UI libraries uh, coming out recently. You can do whatever you like with them. Okay, so we got the name. Uh, we're just gonna pass the header is gonna be the name. Uh, again, for the header, if you wanna update uh, any sort of class on here, uh, you can say class. Uh, say you wanted this bold, you would just say class bold uh, or font bold, um, which is uh, Tailwind. Oh, and that's gotta be a class name because we're using React here. All right, so that is how you would uh, do this. So these are gonna be our various columns and let's continue on. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, add the use React table to actually create our table. So let's come in here, we'll come in below this. We'll leave the console.log right now. Uh, we'll just say const table, and that's gonna be equal to uh, use React uh, table like that. And then inside of this, we're gonna have a few things. So let's say data is gonna be one, uh, columns, and then get core row model and uh, get pagination row model. So this will allow us to actually use pagination on this, which is what we want. All right, so all of that kind of uh, basic setup right there is gonna allow us to come in here and create our uh, actual table. All right, so let's get rid of this table here and we can come in and just actually add a table tag like this. And then inside of this, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is add uh, the head. So we'll add the uh, table head right here and then some content within that. Okay, so let's talk about what you're looking at right here in the table head right now. So uh, we have this uh, table with uh, get header groups. So this is gonna go ahead and get all of your headers and then we're gonna map through them. So you're gonna map through each header group uh, we're going to add the key right here, which is just uh, the ID. And then we're going to map through and add uh, these uh, TH tags right here. We're going to check for this uh, placeholder here, which is one of the options. Uh, if that is there, we'll say null. We won't render anything. And otherwise, we will render this uh, flex render right here, which will basically show our header on the table. <laughs> All right, and then the second part of this is of course uh, the body of our table right here. So we can come in and let's just add that below uh, this T head and we'll talk about it. So here is our uh, table body right now uh, and we're gonna go through and get the rows, we're gonna map through them. Uh, then we are gonna get all the visible cells that we want to show right there. And again, flex render the content of those columns. So this will be rendering the data coming in for each of our columns. So that will be the data uh, from the email, the name, uh, the body, um, that the column data, not the uh, header data, of course. So that is uh, our full kind of uh, table right there. Very simple. Again, we can come in and we can uh, edit this uh, style-wise any way that we want. So let's uh, just show you what that might look like right now. So this is what our table looks like right now. Again, completely unstyled, so you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, this styling here of the uh, italic is what we showed you uh, quickly. Up here, when we're uh, in, in this cell, we just made this italic, so that is why that is italic. Other than that though, we can style this however you want. As you can see here, we're only showing about 10 different entries right here. But uh, with when we looked at our data, there's about 500. So we can add some pagination right now in order to do this. So let's go back and do that. All right, so coming down below our uh, table body right now. So just below our table body right now, I'm gonna add in this pagination and then we can go through it. Uh, very basic, not very styled, but just some basic pagination here. Okay, so if I come up to the top of what I just added in right here, basically we have uh, a few different buttons for various actions right now. So this button right here, this will just send us to the very first page and you see this is done with this index. So we can come in, you could uh, set this however you want. Say you wanted a midpoint, you could find the midpoint and add that uh, here as well. 
uh, and then it's going to be disabled if there's no previous pages uh, available. So if it's at the first page, uh, this will be uh, disabled, this button. And then we can go down and add this for different stuff. So this is going to be a single page uh, backwards. And all we need to do is add this table.previousPage method right there on that. And then again, if there's no uh, previous page, that will be disabled. Next page is the other one we have right here and that'll be this little symbol here and same thing uh, can get next page uh, all this is obviously in the docs uh, and then this is the last page so we get uh, kind of the last index right here uh, and set the page index like that you can get this get page count to get that all right and then we have a little markup right here which will uh, tell you the page count there's an input here to go to a specific page. Oh, a so this is done with an input and an on change right here. And we can actually set the page uh, with this set page index right here. And then this is getting the target value from the input right there. Then finally, you can come in and this is a little select box here, uh, pretty unstyled as everything else is. And this will uh, allow you to set the uh, page size. So how many you want to show at a time. Uh, you can set it any of these numbers uh, you can alter uh, to whatever you want you could do 100 as the last thing whatever you wanted and that'll set uh, from these options it'll set the value of the page size right there okay so let's show you what this is actually going to look like let's come back over and you can see at the uh, bottom right here uh, obviously unstyled uh, but that isn't uh, important right now so we can come over, we can go to the last page right here, we can go to the first page, and then this will, uh, each one of these will move either forward, page two, page three, or backward, page two. Uh, again, we can go to specific uh, page right there, go to page three, that'll set page three, go to page eight, super fast, super snappy, and then we can show more. So let's say we want to show 50, it'll show 50 entries right there. All right, so I think that is kind of it for uh, this right here. Uh, again, uh, pretty simple, uh, allows you a ton of flexibility to do whatever you want with it. And I've barely scratched the surface here with kind of all the options that this uh, TanStack table uh, library gives you. Now, just to show you what one might look like uh, with a few more options and styled, let's, uh, I'll come over and show you one that I built for a kind of a little side project I was working on. All right, so this is uh, just a styled table, kind of the same thing as we had going before, um, but a little, a little nicer, a little better styling, and a bunch of other uh, options just to show you what's possible with this library here. So you can toggle these uh, various columns. It'll uh, toggle them on and off. You can toggle all of them, off, all. You're able to sort by uh, each of these. So we can sort by year, make model here, uh, and then you can search here. So we can search for something here and it will uh, bring stuff up uh, based on that. Uh, so pretty cool. And then obviously the pagination here looks a little better, uh, but the exact same thing as we just did. So you can go to the last, you can go to the next, first, all that different stuff. Oh, we got to clear this. So that wasn't working. Uh, then you can go next here and it'll uh, go to the last one. Same kind of thing. Again, same thing here show you all of those so that is the uh, tan stack table hopefully that uh, gives you a little start on uh, working with this and uh, yeah until the next one thanks for watching